the uh, July meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. Um, the agenda this evening involves the following items. First, the approval of the minutes of the June 16 meeting and also a June 3rd planning board workshop at which a public hearing was scheduled. One item of old business is a private access, access permit at 1200 Shore Road, the Rudolph F. Hafenfeather Fourth Trust is the requesting the permit. Uh, we have two other items of new business. The Paper Street Public Engagement Plan recommendations. Uh, this is something the board has worked on for several sessions now as part of the public engagement plan. <coughs> Excuse me for the 2015 Paper Street Report, and this will include the public hearing on our recommendations. Uh, there will also be consideration of a technical amendments request. The board is requesting the town council refer to the planning board a preparation uh, of a package of technical amendments of the various uh, zoning and uh, of the ordinance, uh, zoning ordinance for consideration. And finally, there'll be an opportunity for public comment. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the first item of business, uh, we'll consider them separately. We have the minutes of the June 16 meeting, which have been circulated for your review. Do any board members have questions or comments? Being none, I'll ask for a motion to approve. Motion that we approve the minutes of the June 16th, 2015 meeting as written. Thank you, Caroline. And is there a second? Second. Thank you, Henry. We have a seconded motion. Is there any discussion on the seconded motion? All in favor? Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Uh, Actually, I, I abstained since I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. Well, it still carries unanimously. <laughs> uh, the uh, other set of meetings at the uh, June 3rd public workshop, we had one item of business uh, which, uh, for, when, for which minutes were required. <coughs> Excuse me. And that was to, um, uh, excuse me. Oh, consider adding a zoning map amendment to the special event facility overlay district zoning ordinance amendment. That's, that's a mouthful. Uh, which had been scheduled for June 16th. Um, you've also received a copy of the minutes from that point. Uh, are there any questions or comments by the board? Entertain a motion to approve the minutes of that uh, workshop. Make a motion we approve the minutes of the June 3rd um, planning board workshop. Thank you, Caroline. Is there a second? Second. Jonathan, uh, is there any discussion on the second in motion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. You were abstaining. Another abstention. Yes. <laughs> Elaine abstained to both, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, the next item of business is the 1200 Shore Road private access <coughs> way permit. Um, we'll uh, this is the uh, application uh, that we're considering the application on its merits. The procedure will be as follows. The planner will discuss how the project fits in with town regulations. Um, we'll ask the applicant or his representative to summarize any changes made to the plans. We will open the meeting for public comment. Um, at the close of the public hearing, we'll discuss the application. And uh, at the end of the discussion, we'll uh, have the option to table, deny, approve, or approve conditions. Maureen, would you like to uh, give us the background on this? Sure. Uh, the lot is located in the Residence A District. The minimum lot size in the Residence A District is 80,000 square feet, and the lot exceeds that amount. However, it does not have any frontage on a town accepted road. It does, however, have a 100 foot wide easement that extends from Shore Road and connects up to the lot, and it's within that easement that a driveway is proposed, the applicant is requesting a private access way permit from the planning board. Thank you. Um, we would now hear from the applicant's representative. Good evening, Chair Curry and planning board members. 
Uh oh, Maureen. What did you do? <laughs> I was a little, no, I got it, I got it. It's a little too uh, Good evening. Um, Stephen Moore from Moore and Saradin, landscape architects, here on behalf of the Rudolph Hatton Trust. And much to my delight, Peter is here this evening on the uh, Peter is Rudolph F. Happenrecker of the Trust. Um, I'm just going to start for the benefit of the public and the board at the beginning and then bring us through the project so there's some framework in which the board knows they're making the decision. In 1997, Peter and Mallory gifted a parcel of land to the land trust and they held the 2.34 acre square that's right in the middle of this plan. They held the fee interest in that, and then they kept the access, egress, and utility rights in the 100-foot-wide L-shaped strip to the west or to the left of that um, center lot as you look at it. At the time, we prepared a recording plan. Because that recording plan now is going to be updated, we've prepared this amended recording plan. It doesn't require board approval or signature, but this plan will run with the parcel, with the land, and can then be referenced in the deeds as the lot of record that passes along with the property. What's of import on this particular plan um, are the three following things. It's been updated for all the abutters and the deed calls. Secondly, it specifically references the set of covenants that have been prepared <coughs> excuse me, and are attached to the so-called beach lot, which is the small lot down right on the waterfront with the indent in it. That's the 1.14 acre parcel. So note three references those restrictions and covenants, which Peter has executed and now rests with the town. The language has been approved by the town. As the board moves forward and we secure approval for the project, then we will record that restrictive covenant that doesn't allow any structures on the beach lot except for a set of stairs for access to the water. We also have added on that plan that large note at the bottom, which is note four, the language that Maureen had provided in her memo that sets forth very clearly the activities that are allowed outside the building envelope. And for reference, what we've done on this recording plat is we've shown the setback, which is that inner dashed line inside the box. So we have a center piece that's about 1.64 acres of unrestricted area, and then the surrounding area in the setbacks fall under those restrictions that are set forth in note four. And that is lifted verbatim from Maureen's comments. I think we corrected one spelling issue on it. What we submitted into the record was this set of existing conditions, which has the topography, the trees all located in that right of way, and then the wetland. As you recall, when we walked the site, we had flagged the proposed road. We had identified the 11 trees that will be cut as a result of the road construction. And for clarity's sake, I want to make it clear that the trees that were flagged are not just the trees that are immediately in the 18-foot roadbed. They're trees that we knew would be lost because of the associated side slopes and culvert construction. So you may recall as we walked this site, within the area that is impacted by the driveway, which is shown here in the gray. There are something in the order of 86 to 88 trees, dependent upon how you count them within that 100-foot um, right-of-way. And we're impacting 11 of those trees. As I said at the previous two meetings, the intent of the driveway is to preserve that overstory and canopy of the large um, collection of red oaks to not impact the wetland that's there and to really match the grade that exists on the site, again, to minimize grade, fill, cut, 
and drainage. And with the help of that string that you saw that showed the finished grade, I think you had a pretty good visualization of how that driveway really hugs the terrain coming down that 100-foot wide strip. In terms of changes in this particular plan, the only real change is at Culvert 2. As you recall, the town engineer had a list of 19 or 21 comments, and we addressed all those in the affirmative. One of the interesting things on this is that by lowering the culvert, which was the inner culvert near the turnaround, we actually changed the flow of direction, so we had to switch the watershed and, and recalculate the watershed area. And it doesn't really affect any of the performance of the road, but it does accomplish what the town engineer was looking for in terms of increased culvert coverage by the roadbed. Um, the turnaround, you can see, is dimensioned and conforms with your standards. And really, that's the only change on this, is that adjustment in that culvert. We also added a note that specifically references the fact that um, there will be a street light out at Shore Road, but that there are no other street lights proposed along the driveway. The reason we added that note was because of our discussions on the site and the sense that if we put that on this plan, then it's clear as part of the private access way permit that the board understood that and those restrictions will apply to um, adding lighting along that driveway. The road profiles on the bottom, again, nothing has changed in there. Um, I'm just highlighting this drawing. This was the drainage plan. And you can see the large bubble that is now on the east side of the driveway. Originally, the watershed was from the west side, similar to watershed one, but now it's moved over to the other side and drains back and into um, land that is under the control of Hidden Court. And if you look at those stormwater calculations and understand them, the change in runoff is de minimis. There's no real effective change in the runoff because of that change in the watershed. But it's been noted and is part of the record for that. Um, we then have a set of detail sheets, which Maureen's computer has. There we go. Nothing has changed on these detail sheets in terms of the information on it. We did clarify the discrepancy between the text and the plan in terms of the length of pavement. That was one piece that the town engineer picked up on, so it's clearly spelled out now that it's 20 feet of pavement on both plans and sections and details. Um, and in terms of any other substantive change, there's really nothing from the original submission to this. What we've done is picked up Maureen's comments and Steve Harding's comments, incorporated it in the plan set and have that plan set now finished, um, hoping again that the board could approve this this evening for that private access way permit. Um, with that, I think I'll turn it back to the board to open to the public, unless Peter or Kim have anything to add. Thank you, Peter. Back to the board. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, do any board members have questions for Mr. Moore before we proceed to the public hearing? Okay, we will now uh, open uh, the public hearing on this application. Are there any members of the public who would like to be heard? Yes, sir. If you would uh, step to the podium, uh, give us your name and address, and uh, I'd like to hear from you. I'm Paul Farrow. I live at 1208 Shore Road, which is immediately to the west of this parcel, along where the driveway runs. And, and I just have a simple question. The notation about the lights in the driveway, does that preclude future lights or just mean there's none designed in now? I, I, I believe we think it mean the application as submitted, if it were approved, would be no lights. Uh, there's nothing to say in the future somebody couldn't come back and try to amend the permit. Marine, is that correct? Yes. In which case the, the addition of lights would be considered on its merits, but right now, no lights. So they, they're not... Uh, they're not precluded in perpetuity, it just in, and, and it would take an amendment to the permit for lights to be added. So there would be another one of these proceedings where you would have a chance to be heard about your feelings. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. 
Are there any other members of the public who would like to be heard on this application? There being none, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, I would also add for the benefit of the public, we had a site walk on this property and uh, spent a, a quite a bit of time there walking the route of the proposed driveway and having a description from the applicant's representatives about how it would be laid out. And we had a chance to look at the abutting property because they had raised some concerns also. Uh, is there any discussion by members of the board on this? Uh, questions, comments? Okay, I mean, I just add my own comment. I think this is uh, this has been very uh, carefully vetted, uh, carefully documented, uh, well-prepared application. Um, if there is no further discussion, uh, we'll entertain a motion uh, from the board uh, with findings of fact and uh, approval of the application. Caroline. Get to the right page. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Rudolph F. Heffenraffer the Fourth Trust is requesting a private access way permit to construct a driveway to a lot located at 1200 Shore Road, which requires review under Section 19-7-9 Private Access Ways. The private access way standards require delineation of a building envelope. The town engineer has recommended minor clarifying revisions to the plan. The application <laughs> substantially complies with the section 19-7-9 private access ways and section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Rudolph F. Heffenrapper for trust for a private access way permit to construct a driveway to a lot located at 1200 Shore Road be approved subject to the following conditions. The plans be revised for compliance with the town engineer's comments and his letter dated July 15, 2015. That the building envelope be labeled and a note added to the plan describing activities allowed outside the building envelope as follows. Activities outside the building envelope, the building envelope are restricted to the installation of driveway and utilities. Vegetation outside the building envelope shall be preserved. Hazard, um, dead or storm damaged trees may be removed after consultation with the code enforcement officer as follows. The removal of standing dead trees resulting from natural causes or storm damaged trees is permissible without the need for replanting as long as the removal does not result in the creation of new lawn areas or other permanently cleared areas and stumps are not removed. The area shall be required to be naturally revegetate -veg and to be planted with native plants within one year if natural vegetation has not been established. For purposes of this provision, dead trees are those trees that contain no foliage during the growing season. Three, that the plans be revised to reflect the above conditions and that there be no issuance of a building permit nor alteration of the site until the plan has been signed by the planning board and recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. At the time of plan recording, the restrictions on the beach lot previously approved by the town attorney and code enforcement officer and the revised plan which removes the building envelope from the beach lot shall also be recorded. Uh, thank you. Do we have a second for this motion? Second. Elaine, thank you. Is there any discussion on the seconded motion? I just want but who's responsible for the replanting and the maintenance? The owner of the building site or the, 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 the owner of the site property? Building? For the area outside of that property, he's responsible. They are responsible for the area outside of their building. This is a note that has evolved over time. The planning board has uh, helped create this note because we've had situations where people have been um, precluded from removing any vegetation outside the building envelope, and then you, the people have come. In fact, we have someone in the audience right now who had to come back to the planning board and get their uh, plan amended to allow the removal of trees. So this is a note that allows removal of trees that really should be removed 
without allowing trees to be removed that just expand the lawn area and uh, undermine the board's desire to create a buffer. Thank you. Is there any uh, further discussion? A call for a vote on the second motion. I'd just like to make a comment for the audience because we're not having a lot of discussion. The site walk answered every question we had and the, uh, the minor changes that the engineer has, uh, has recommended are very, very minimal and it, it's captured in the motion. So that's why there's so little discussion on this. So. <laughs> Good clarification. Thank you, Caroline. Um, there being no further discussion, I will call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. I would ask Maureen, just procedurally, if this is acceptable <clears throat> through the chair, I have the Mylar. What I'm hoping is to drop that up and have the board sign it, but Maureen, you hold it until you've gone through the plans and made sure they comply. Is that, in terms of protocol, that allows us to keep it moving because we have addressed those, yes. those questions. So if that's acceptable to the chair, I'll provide the Mylar in one print copy. Great. Then you'll go to the slide. Take it, yeah. Then you'll let us know and drop my on it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. That uh, concludes our uh, agenda item on the uh, private access way permit. Do you need my pen or are you good with the... Signing, uh, signing the bottom. Just leave it there. I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you, board members. I appreciate it. The paper's on top, the mylar's underneath. The next, <coughs> excuse me, item of business is the um, Paper Street Public uh, Engagement <coughs> Plan. The uh, town councils refer to the planning board as described in the uh, Paper Street Public Engagement Plan review of the 2015 Paper Street Report. The Planning Board has reviewed the report at the June 3, 2015 workshop and at the June 16, 2015 meeting. The public hearing in this matter is scheduled for this evening and will proceed as follows. Now the Town Planner will summarize the Paper Street review process, which we have used. Uh, we will then open the uh, hearing for comments, questions, and the like from uh, members of our public. Um, at the close of the public hearing, the board uh, will discuss a recommendation to the town council. And we will um, essentially adopt a resolution to review, uh, to recommend this report to the town council or not. Maureen, could you provide the background, please? Sure, and I, th I think you've done a lot of it, Peter, but um, Paper Streets is something that the town extended for 20 years in 1997. Uh, we have another 20-year, our 20-year extension is, is coming to an end in 2017, so the town council decided Paper Streets have been uh, very controversial in some areas, and so the council has adopted a three-step process. Part one of the process is to have the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission review Paper Streets um, and make a recommendation to the Council. The Planning Board's own rules state that you only make decisions when um, you're at a full meeting and you usually hold a public hearing before you make any decisions. So that's why we're here tonight for uh, you to hold a public hearing. You've reviewed the paper streets. There is a chart in your package that includes the list of all the paper streets we have identified. It evaluates the paper streets for the presence of things such as uh, driveways or utilities, uh, the need for them to be used for lot access or as a turnaround, being used as an existing trail or a potential trail, and its adjacency to open space. Uh, so if you look at that chart, you'll see that you've recommended almost all of the uh, streets be retained. There's a draft recommendation on um, Thompson Road that you probably want to look at and refine a little bit more. And in your package, there is um, a drawing, and I put that in there in order to assist you with a piece of correspondence you received. Approximately the first 200 feet of Thompson Road from Shore Road is occupied with uh, private driveway, <coughs> private road. 
And then if you measure from Shore Road another 625 feet, you get to the lot where the property owners have asked um, that the, the right-of-way of Thompson Road be preserved. And then if you wanted to preserve the right-of-way of Thompson Road all the way to the far boundary of that lot, that would be approximately 900 feet. So um, Thompson Road is one that is still something the board may want to refine um, right now. In the draft recommendation, the recommendation that is that it would be preserved only for the first 200 feet and then the remainder vacated. Um, I have confirmed that after the first 200 feet, all of the land, all of the lots on Thompson Road are owned by people who also have frontage on Beach Bluff Terrace. So unless there's more questions about that, um, the, what's before the board tonight is to consider a recommendation to the council and that would wrap up the part one portion of the Paper Street public engagement plan. Any questions? Yeah, could you also, Maureen, comment on the next phase of the uh, sure. proceeding where people also have a chance to be heard? So the, um, the, public, the Paper Street Public Engagement Plan had a part one process where both the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission would provide recommendations to the Council. The Conservation Commission um, finished their recommendations last Tuesday night, um, and if the Planning Board can s finishes its recommendations tonight, the part two portion would begin, and that is a new initiative by the Town Council to host um, a number of neighborhood area meetings. And those meetings have not been scheduled. They haven't been located. It's my expectation that the council is waiting for the recommendations from the counts from the conservation commission and the planning board to be completed, and then they are going to initiate that phase. And that is the phase where they are really emphasizing public comment. Um, so certainly anyone can comment at, at any public meeting of the planning board, uh, but that's the one where they're they're hoping to gather the most amount of public comment. And then part three would be the traditional council public hearing before they consider any action. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, next, oh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Just one question. Have we heard anything from any other uh, residents of Beach Bluff Terrace with regards to the Thompson Road Paper Street? Um, there was one owner on Beach Bluff Terrace who expressed support for having the Thompson Road eliminated. And he has not provided anything in writing. He just came into the office and had a chat. Was that somebody who lives uh, further down? Yes. Towards the dead end street? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions from the board for Maureen? Uh, okay, we will now uh, open, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the meeting for the public hearing on this uh, matter. Are there any members of the public here tonight who would like to be heard? If you would approach the podium and give your name and address and... Uh... Chris Bolas, and I live at uh, 60 Edgewood Road, and I own a lot on Stone Drive. Uh, it's about just under 8,000 square feet. It abuts uh, Paper Street that now dead ends at uh, the Blueberry Ridge subdivision. So it's, it's only about 70 feet long. Um, I know it... it may connect with the uh, uh, part of the green belt. So uh, if it were abandoned, though, uh, put me very close to having a, uh, a buildable lot with the 10,000 square feet. So um, I'm just here to see if that might be something that would be considered. Uh, I'm sure a pedestrian easement could be worked out, so it could I'm, I'm sorry, sir, the, your, the property that you're talking about is located on Blueberry? Uh, it's on Stone Drive. I, I do have a, a okay. couple of copies of that. If we can locate it on uh, our... Mr. Bullis, is, is the paper street you're talking about also labeled U1-1A? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, it's, it's U1-1A is the identification label on our paper street inventory. Okay. You okay? You oh, won. Right, right. And we had recommended to retain. To retain that because immediately right. um, west of U1-1A, you'll see that it 
there's a pedestrian easement that connects that paper street to the dead end of, I believe it's Red Oak Drive? Nope, Fernwood Lane. So that's why it's been recommended to be retained. Okay. And Mr. Willis, you were asking that it be vacated, is that Right, I was asking for it to be vacated. Um, I'm sure, like I said, uh, a pedestrian easement could be worked out that would be continued access uh, to the green belt. And why, sir, were you asking that it be vacated? Uh, well, as it stands, the lot's just under 8,000 square feet. At one time, it was a buildable lot. With the ordinance change to 10,000, it was uh, no longer, it wasn't grandfathered in. So if the paper street is vacated, uh, I'll get to half of the, uh, you know, to the middle of the uh, paper street, which would put me just about at 10,000 square feet. So. Okay. That's, Mr. Bullis, aren't you still a little under? I, I am. I'm about uh, uh, just under 200 square feet. Okay. So it's a very small sliver. Um, uh, but it's certainly uh, pretty close. Yeah. Do you have any questions for Mr. Bullis? If, if, it, if it was vacated and you had a buildable lot, how would you get to the lot? Oh, it's, it has frontage on Stone Drive. It has what, sorry? Frontage on Stone Drive. It on which Stone Drive? Because, oh, all right, on the retained Stone Drive, which is in itself a paper street, correct? No. Uh, no, the, uh, it has frontage on a street. It's oh, just okay. the okay. paper street. We're would, talking about okay. Stone Drive. This is Stone Drive right here. Correct. And we're talking about this spot oh, okay. right here. No. Okay. <laughs> So this, this is Stone, and I can pull this map up if we need to. This, this, right this is the one he's talking about, and he yeah. owns this lot. And this is the flood connectivity? Yes. This way. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Bullis? John? Just procedurally, um, Mr. Bullis will have an opportunity to discuss this at a neighborhood meeting with the town council, correct? Both at a neighborhood meeting and at a public hearing with the council, yes. Right. And I could come up with something maybe a little more formal. I just uh, saw this was on the agenda. I just want yeah, to... our review, Mr. Bill, is sort of a top-down review. And when we came to this parcel, as well as many, many others, if there was a reason to keep uh, the paper street in place because of some existing use or possible use or what have you, the tendency was to let it stay in effect. Um, just so you know that. You know, there was a, a reason behind the, the recommendation right, right, as, as right. you see it now. Well, it, the, the paper street won't connect to another, uh, can't connect to the street now, now that the private homeowners um, dead end, you know, they own the property, so it won't make it to uh, Red Oak. But, um, like I say, other than the pedestrian easement, I don't see a, an issue with um, vacating it. Uh, is that it on your comments? Yeah. No, I, Thank you, sir. All right. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Sue Marie Garrett. I am on Katahdin Road in Cape Elizabeth. I am a 50-year Cape Elizabeth resident, plus my children are third-generation Cape Elizabeth Ethians. Um, I understand that this paper street uh, issue is very controversial, but I think um, looking at the big picture in the long term, it's very important that we retain these paper streets on behalf of all the community and for the longevity of our children for years to come. So I appreciate your time and hope that we continue to keep these paper streets available for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who would like to be heard? Being none, we'll close the public uh, part of this uh, hearing on this particular matter. Uh, the members of the board, we uh, can now discuss the, well, both the, the, the general uh, recommendations, scheme of recommendations as it's, uh, you have in your, in your package and uh, we can decide uh, 
what might be done about the one comment we have, which is the Thompson Road property. Any discussion or comments? With regards just to Thompson Road. Well, let, let, let's let's take the the general picture, and then we'll come we'll come to Thompson Road and the scheme of things. And, and so the public d does know, as, as uh, I indicated before, we've had some fairly long um, sessions going through these parcels, parcel by parcel by parcel. Uh, the staff has produced a very fine aerial photography with the parcels overlaid on them, so we can see if there were trails, sewage lines, water lines, uh, various and sundry types of uh, public use that might be made. So. Uh, this is the end of our process um, in, in case it, if you're wondering why there isn't more discussion among the board members already, it's, it's happened uh, previously. Um, but that said, Jonathan. Well, and also one thing um, just to reiterate on uh, what Peter was saying, one of the other things that the planning board was uh, charged with looking at was sort of taking a perspective of um, recommending whether we should vacate or retain some of these paper streets based on sort of a planning board perspective, sort of what the, the grand scheme of things town-wide it would have. It was sort of, it was different than what the Conservation Commission was looking at, and uh, it's going to be, it was different than what the town council will have the final say. So even with our recommendations, just uh, for anybody who either agrees or disagrees with the recommendations, you will have an opportunity to discuss with the town council um, and I, we would most likely, at least for me, I would uh, want you to make sure that you do talk to the town council at uh, these different forums that you're going to uh, uh, get the opportunity to speak, speak at. Uh, with regards to specifically um, what we were looking at uh, with the Thompson Road, I can understand, um, I, I, forgive me, I don't remember the name of the, uh, the citizen that contacted us, but I could see what their thoughts were um, with wanting to possibly keep that stretch of uh, the Thompson Road Paper Street open because it does appear that they did buy two lots behind two houses and um, looking at the the lot that they do have frontage to Beef Bluff, uh, Beach Bluff Terrace, it may be sort of uh, if we did if that Thompson Road was vacated that it would um, make that lot basically hard hard to access um, that said I, I do think that if I don't know I, I think that possibly that we could allow uh, a retention of that uh, the back, uh, the front, the front stretch, and then a vacation of the uh, the back stretch. But that's just a thought on on that Thompson Road. Morning, could you clarify on the Thompson Road? Um, the first 200 feet is now uh, in full use as a private as a driveway, right? Yes, that uh, the properties. first 200 feet is actually. Um, a private access way that was approved by the planning board. Right. And, and then, the first two lots actually used that for access. Right. And then the next 625 feet. If you measure from Shore Road back 625, then. Oh, so that's the next 425. Yes. Okay. So, and I meant each of these me measurements are from the intersection with Shore Road to, for ease of making motions. Um, but if you wanted to retain all the way up to the lot that's outlined in blue, um, which was the, and I also forget their name, but the property owner who, who asked for that to be retained, that's the first 625 feet. And then if you wanted to retain it through their lot to their far edge, that's about 900 feet. And the, the, um, and, the and Quinlan and Kruger, Mr. Uh, Quinlan and, and Ms. Quinlan? Yes, that's the one. Which parcel is there? Their parcel is the lot that's outlined in blue. That L-shaped one, so they yes. were essentially saying they'd like it to... They want to retain Thompson Road. It's a 25-foot right-of-way. Right. Um, and the thing is, if you have a right-of-way, um, you need to measure your setbacks from the edge of the right-of-way. That's right. why, for the people further down the road, um, the size of the building envelope for the lots that they have purchased, 
that are to the rear of the Beach Bluff Terrace, basically the lots that are frontage on Thompson Road. Mm -hmm. The building envelope on those lots are fairly small because they have to measure a 20 to 30 foot setback off of that Thompson Road right of way. If you get rid of Thompson Road, their uh, building envelopes get bigger. But if you got rid of Thompson Road, only the average is 525. Is that five, five, six, five, five, six, six, twenty-five. Six, twenty-five. Then, they right. would, then that would still, still, it would allow them twenty-five foot more building. No, if you keep it, building. if yes, if you keep, if you go to six twenty-five and then you recommend vacation beyond six hundred and twenty-five, right. everyone that's more than six hundred and twenty-five feet from Shore Road, that section of Thompson Road, if the council accepts your recommendation, would be vacated, and then that twenty-five foot space would be divided in half and go to each side oh. which in both of their case in most of the cases it's going to the same person but in actual fact only increases it by 12 or something like that. well since most of the people that own beach the land on beach bluff terrace have purchased lots behind them Ooh, it's okay. it's mostly the same people. So, for example, yeah, the Sul the Quinlan lot, they've purchased not just the land behind their house, but behind a couple of other lots. Yeah, Peter, you've got questions. Yes, I'm sorry. So, if if we vacate Thompson Road, um, and you're saying a number of people on Beach Bluff Terrace have purchased the lots behind them, should they choose to develop those lots, where would the access come from? All of, all of these people, the expectation was their access would come from Beach Bluff Terrace. So from a planning perspective, assuming what I think is rather unlikely, that all of those lots would be developed, we would have a whole line of houses there sort of double accessed from Beach Bluff Terrace. And I wonder whether that's really a good planning tool. If, if the, there are lots back there, that we anticipate will be developed, wouldn't it be better from a planning perspective to retain that road and have all of those lots access there rather than kind of doing double access from Beach Bluff Terrace, which I don't think seems to me to end up with more traffic on a rather small road than and lots, of right, think, and lots of right turns. And lots, right. Of, yeah. lots of kind of unusual, you're right, turning in and out of yeah. Driveways. Now, my guess is most of those people who own the back lots at this point don't intend to develop them. But on the other hand, you know, even if they say they don't now, their children might at some point. So it, it seems to me kind of short-sighted to lose the rights to that road when there's a whole string of lots there. So, and I know. Oh, John I'm sorry. Exactly. Have we heard anything from uh, the resident that lives on the second house down on Thompson Road? The one that no. uh, abuts the no, we have property? Not. No. We, to, to, to answer um, Mrs. Fallender's question, whether it's a good planning position or not is really what the board's being asked to do. Right. Um, Beach Bluff Terrace, I believe, is a 40 foot wide right of way, if not 50. I'm almost positive it's 40. Thompson Road is a 25 foot wide right of way. So it is a horribly substandard sized road. Um, Beach Bluff is a road that we know we can get emergency personnel down, and it's paved and it, it gets plowed. And Thompson Road is marginal very, very marginal. It would never be accepted by the town. If they, if the, somebody wanted to make it a 40 foot or 50 foot wide right of way, I don't think that the lots that are left on there would be big enough to actually build on at that point. So um, definitely that's what the question is for the planning board. Is it, does it make more sense to preserve the rights to Thompson Road or does it make more sense to um, continue to use Beach Bluff some of the property owners on Beach Bluff have informally, over the years, come in to explore the potential for building on those back lots. And um, one of my concerns has been that they keep forgetting there's a paper street there, and some of them are trying to build on the paper street, which, you know, from a title perspective, is bad, bad news. Yeah, 
Um, some of I, I want to make I want to make it very clear that we have not evaluated the buildability of the lots on Thompson Road. And if you look at our zoning map, it appears that at least some of them have substantial RP2 wetlands on them. So um, if you wanted to build Thompson Road, you would have to alter RP2 wetlands to build it. So those are some of the, the things for the board to um, consider as you're looking at this recommendation. But this, the parcel from the folks who submitted the letter, yes, this L-shaped parcel, they've picked up, they've done a little assembly of yes. lots over here, so they do have enough space to build on. If they have a dry spot. We're no, true enough, assuming, but I, I take their point to be that mm -hmm. if they did that, they would have to run a, a private access driveway. To Next to their lot. existing home, and that yeah. would be very tight. Yeah, and to yeah. Elaine's point, I guess if, if all these people started assembling parcels back here to build on, they would all have to have private access driveways through the existing parcels and hook up on Beach Bluff Terrace. Yes, they would. Which, from a planning point of view, doesn't sound like like a great outcome, okay. although a 20-foot road isn't that great a deal either. It's, it's a planning no, problem. Sorry. So from my perspective, I think when, what my thought was when we did um, make the preliminary recommendation um, that we vacate Thompson Road was the idea that the, uh, that the people who were buying these lots were buying the lots that abutted their own property, thinking that, oh, a vacation of this paper street makes sense because it takes away the fact that there's a paper street increases these people's land value and in case they did want to build on it, they wanted to make their own plans for their own property, that they would have that opportunity. Um, the, uh, the change that my perspective has is when the Quinlans contacted us and noted that one of the reasons that they did buy the properties that not only went directly behind them but also up was with this idea that hey, there's a paper street, we can have access to this Thompson Road if we have that. Um, which I think, in a way, I give them credit for thinking that way and, and having that plan. So my thought on this would be um, to, unless we hear from some, some owners, some property owners at the end of Beach Bluff Terrace that would be op opposed to uh, vacating the um, the back portion of um, Thompson Rose up, up, up to the, the either 625 feet or 900 feet that I would still recommend a, uh, vacating those, that paper street at that end and then leaving the first 625 feet, uh, retaining that um, because I think the, the Quinlans make a good point that they have a unique position that their property does appear to, I don't know what the wetland restrictions would be, but does appear that they may have two buildable lots um, behind them and that they should, if they did purchase that property with the idea that there is a paper street that that could gain them access, not a 40 foot wide road, but a 25 foot uh, private driveway, that they shouldn't have that sort of, the rugs uh, taken out from underneath them. Um, so my recommendation would be to, and I know this is just a recommendation that town council is going to have the ultimate say on it, um, but my recommendation would be to retain the 625 feet um, while vacating the remainder of, um, well, actually, yeah, it would be the, I guess the 625 feet and vacating the, the rest of it, unless, I'm not sure if the Quinlans, and I know they're not here tonight, but um, indicated that they wanted the paper street over their own property uh, kept, but maybe on, in an abundance of caution, we might want to retain that too, and then they can make a, uh, they can speak to the town council about uh, getting rid of that, but, and also that's taking into perspective too that we have not heard from the, uh, the residents who do live at the end, that second house down on, on Thompson Road, because I know that Paper Street goes right through their property. Uh, Henry. Here. The, the section to the left of the proposed street, the, it's got no markings on it. It's, 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 it's open land. It's private property. One big lot. 
one big like is it Bill call at some stage you think Nippity. probably probably so they but would they have, have hundreds of feet on shore road yeah so that most of at some stage maybe maybe not maybe developed and wouldn't rely on on uh, this road for access I don't see it would no. I uh, uh, Lane or Caroline do you have any Thoughts you'd like to share? My, incl my inclination is to not vacate the street at all. And without hearing, without hearing from the other property owners, it's like, okay, let's go down 900 feet. Oops, someone else comes up, but geez, there's a gap in between. You know, it's like not vacate, send the information that we have to the council so they know the discussion that's been had. And uh, I mean, the final call is theirs. And the people on Beach Bluff can petition the council, can write letters to the council so we have something in writing, like the Quinlan's provided, and then the council can make the call because they're going to make the final call anyway. So, Elaine. I, I agree with Carol Ann. I would not vacate that street. There are so many times when we have had development occur in much less than ideal circumstances. And I think it may, in the long run, be make more sense to use Beach Bluff Terrace essentially to access three tiers of lots rather than two. But it may, in the long run, make sense to preserve that paper street for at least part of that development. And I see a very messy situation when those back lots come in for development, and I would rather retain more rather than fewer options for that to occur. So I wouldn't, from a planning perspective, recommend to the town council giving that up. I would recommend at this stage that it be retained, at least until we have much more information from that neighborhood. I think I'll yeah. go along with that as well. Yeah, I, I would like to say, I, I think I share uh, Carol Ann and Elaine's view, uh, the, the Quinlan's make a fair point in their own interest, as they should, to keep it so they can uh, possibly develop those ba their back lot. The very same point, the very same arguments can be made for all of the rest of Thompson Road, uh, where somebody might want to do the same thing. Uh, and I can't think of a, any good reason to cut the matter off so the Quinlan's would benefit, but nobody further down the road. So my reaction would be to simply not vacate Thompson Road at all in its entirety and leave the matter for the local area folks to talk about at the neighborhood meetings in phase two if they're so inclined. Uh, Justin? Well, I, I would respectfully disagree with that, just like I said, but I'm not gonna, um, I, I would just say we should vacate the first uh, um, or vacate the, the back half and um, but that's why there's chocolate and vanilla sometimes. Yeah, my, my only comment on that is it, it seems a bit um, prescribed and, and leaning very much towards you know the, 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 it's done specifically to enhance that particular that particular site by cutting it off at that point. Because if it was allowed to go on, that site becomes unbuildable. But if you cut it off at that point, it mostly becomes buildable. Well, my, my point was that I would give the Quinlan's the opportunity to um, keep, to retain that paper street up to their property. But then I would, my thought was the people at the back end of Beach Bluff Terrace, and granted, this is without hearing from them to know if they want this or don't want this, um, but you have, I see one, two, three, looks like four lots at the back of Beach Bluff Terrace, all of which are almost whole lots, square lots, that I'm sure would, and like I said, I don't know this for sure because we haven't heard from them, but it looks like there's no benefit of a paper street going through their property except for limiting what they can do with their property. And that's what I don't like. I, I would like to see those people who own this property have the right to do what they want and not have that paper street there. 
but I think that that's something that they can address with the town council. So I don't really think that I need well, to take up the board's time anymore with that. With so. all due respect, that's unless they have room to develop and hadn't thought about it, in which case they would want the street just up to their lot and not beyond it. I mean, that, I mean, you said before it was thoughtful to come up with this idea right. of extending that. So there's, there's pros and cons, but the other people on the street may not have thought about it yet, but maybe they might after this meeting. And my hope is that they'll talk to the town council about it. So, <laughs> so that's why I would retain it for, for a while and then let everybody discuss it at a, with, with more knowledge than possibly they have at the moment. Well, that's a, a conversation that can take place at the phase two uh, hearing where you have people on either side of the issue who can express their views. I think um, from what I'm hearing at the moment, there appear to be four members roughly in favor of changing the recommendation on Thompson Road from retain in, par in footnote three to um, retain. Retain. No, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, to eliminate uh, footnote three, mm -hmm. which would essentially say the Thompson Road Paper Street would retain its full length. Um, to bring this particular point to a conclusion, uh, would somebody like to make a motion to eliminate footnote three, uh, which would then make the recommendation be to retain Thompson Road? The recommendation to consider that the planning board remove note three from the Thompson Road U10-1 plan. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Second. Any discussion on the second motion? In favor? Opposed? Okay, the motion carries four in favor, one opposed. Um, on the point raised by Mr. Bulos, which I don't think we necessarily have to entertain this evening, I'd like to thank Mr. Bulos for making this point and uh, like to get some sense of the board of, of what we might do with it. Caroline? I would like to... I'm under the assumption, I should say, that when this recommendation goes to the council, that that piece of information would go along with it. The fact we've had a public meeting, it's part of public record, I would certainly hope that his comments would be appended to whatever we send to the, board, to the town council. So um, I don't, I am not inclined to change our recommendation, but I certainly support his efforts to, to uh, do what he can to sway them. Yeah, and I think Mr. Rubulis recognized in his presentation that uh, at the next phase he could come in with a little bit more specific and detailed uh, presentation in writing, preferably, uh, you know, laying out your arguments and so forth. Um, so you, you s would still have ample opportunity to make your point. And I think I share Carolyn's view that uh, we should not change our recommendation on that particular parcel this evening. Uh, that doesn't take a motion unless somebody wants to change it. Okay. Is there any other uh, discussion the board would like to uh, have on this topic before we go to a vote? Um, are you going to accept the vote for the whole thing, or are we going to... We're going to go thing. through each individual one thing. again. The whole thing. The whole thing. It's this spreadsheet. Okay. Sure. And we have that one amendment eliminating footnote yes. three. Um, with that in mind, we'll entertain a motion. If somebody would like to make one. Uh, Elaine? Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the meeting materials and the facts presented, the planning board recommends that the paper street shown on the paper street inventory chart as amended at this meeting, be vacated or retained. Where paper streets are recommended to be retained, the planning board's recommendation is based on the features found in and adjacent to the paper street as identified on the paper street inventory chart. Second. Is there any further discussion on the uh, seconded motion? Um, 
Is there anything on the Thompson Road note? No, I, I, if you take out footnote three, I think everything we're already yeah, covered. I think, yeah, as long as you take that out. Okay. Uh, we have a seconded motion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, okay, the last item of uh, business before a final chance for public comment is the technical amendments um, package and we've discussed this at our workshop Maureen would you like to give us the background on this um, sure memorandum um, that you submitted uh, I think most of the board is uh, thoroughly painfully familiar with all of the uh, zoning amendment packages you've been working on over the years most of them coming out of the comprehensive plan or referred by the council um, but it has been the town's practice to peer periodically assemble a group of otherwise unrelated amendments that are more cleanup, clarification uh, type amendments. We've called them miscellaneous packages or technical amendments. And uh, over the last couple of years, we've got another list that we're, we're working with. So uh, the thought is that the planning board should ask the council for authorization to start work on a technical amendments package. And what you have in front of you is uh, basically the running list just in the last day. I came up with two more items we could probably put on here. Um, but what you're asking is for them to authorize you to start work on, on a package that you would cover these items on this list and other items so that um, as we continue to reach out to town staff or a couple of things other po also pop up, we would just add them to the package and the intent would be to put the package together, go through the typical process of a public hearing and then send them back to the council for consideration. Uh, this kind of effort, you know, easily could take six months. This potentially is a stupid question, but would we set um, a limit on the number that we would include in this package like we would we might add others but we wouldn't exceed 20 or we wouldn't exceed 15 I, I wouldn't um, I can tell you I became aware well just recently of something that's going to be on the council agenda next month and when they act on that item they may also want to initiate an ordinance amendment adjustment because of that item this is a very convenient package to drop those kind of things into. Okay. So the important thing is to make sure people understand this is still a very, very transparent process, that there would be a very detailed memo that would explain each and every memo, where it is, why it's being done, so that it's not an effort to kind of hide things. And then would you have to have, them have, to have a public meeting on each of the no. items? We would treat it as a package of amendments similar to the land use amendments package that the planning board has just completed. That was a variety of amendments. They sort of had uh, an organizing theme, but they came out of two different ordinances, actually three different ordinances and multiple sections. So um, there wouldn't be a limit on the number unless the planning board wants to do that. There wouldn't be a certain subject area. It's just a, it, it's a cleanup for the most part. Yeah. I, I, if I can make one more comment, um, I think it says it in here, but I think it's really important. Why would you do this? Um, the main reason for doing it is, one, to protect the town from unintended interpretations of existing ordinance provisions. When you write ordinance provisions, you're taking your best effort, but things come up and all of a sudden what you wrote seems to not be what you, what the town said it wanted. So this is an opportunity to protect the public interest. The other thing, the reason you do it is to provide better customer service because sometimes, again, people will come in with questions and you look at the ordinance and you're kind of scratching your head and you're saying, gee, I guess we could have been a little clearer about that. So I think this is both a customer service, op, a customer service benefit and a protect the public health, safety, and welfare benefit. Further comments? Um, I don't know if the practice wouldn't necessarily be to have a formal motion on this, or should we just? I would. I would suggest you would make a formal okay. motion that you and I don't believe I wrote a formal motion did, for you. I will I have to wink. Propose a motion that this. Uh, the, the memorandum 
based upon this draft with any changes by Maureen approved by the chair to be submitted to the town council. You just said it. <laughs> but you can't. <laughs> You just made the motion. I don't move really to uh, the uh, memorandum uh, based upon this draft man memorandum with any changes um, uh, prepared by Maureen and approved by the chair be submitted to the town council. So we can get it tweaked up to your satisfaction. I saw a thumbs up here, so I guess that's a second. Henry, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. This is a, a British second. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Uh, Absolutely, old chap. Yes. <laughs> we have a, uh, a second in motion. Any uh, discussion on the second motion? All in favor? Yeah, opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, there is an opportunity for public comment, and seeing no members of the public present, we'll open and close. Make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Next motion would be to adjourn. Henry is also given his <laughs> second. I agree. <laughs> All in favor? We are adjourned.